Hello everybody and welcome to the ninth video in Indie Resources how to build a browser based MMO version 2.0. Um, in this video we're going to go over the registration process. Go ahead and get that out of the way. The registration and login to me are the two most two boring parts so I just went ahead and wrote it, wrote it all and just going to explain it and get through these next two videos as quick as we can so we can get on to the fun stuff. I'm not a huge fan of the um, the registration system and the other thing is too is there's everybody's going to have their own ways of doing it. I'm just going to put in the way that I'm going to do it. If you want to use it, use it. If you don't, put in your own system. But it does work. Um, and I just, I'd rather just get through these videos. So let's get started. So to give an example how it works, we've got our normal username, course, password. We can hit register. And um, no, no refresh here. It just pops up the new box. I've got a, a list of classes. This is going to come from, I've created some new, I created a new table called classes. And if we browse it, I just entered in some real quick uh, classes. And basically, um, what we're going to do is you just you can just insert your classes in here. You can put um, you know name them, and then this is going to be their modifier. So this adds to their normal like default. And we're going to get into that here. I didn't put it in this video. It's going to go in the next video about. I'll show you when I get there. It's hard to explain right now. But anyway, these are the modifiers for all the stats they'll get. So each class will have different modifiers. So if you know the fighter. Notice the fighter has like hit points 10 and then his uh, his strength is going to be 5 but yet his wisdom and stuff is you know, lower. So if you look at the like the healer or the, even the sage they have good um, harvest but other things are you know lower. So it's, it just depends on the class and you guys can come in and change them whatever. I'm just putting them in here of course. But then the, the pick actually goes to if you go into your media and you go into your characters, hero tiles, here are the hero tiles here. I'm not using the one I had before because technically I can't really use all those because they're paid for resources and I can't give them away for free. So these are these are ones I just found on the internet. So we can just use them for whatever we want. But if you just want to add more, um, basically you can just add them in here, make them 11, 12, 13, and then you just name that that number pretty much corresponds to whatever you put here, and that's what will show up, and that's what will actually automatically show up here. It's, this is just an array that it just for array that it just goes through, and every one that it finds in the database it adds here. So I can come in and I can put in halls. I can just put test as my password. Test. I'll pick the assassin and I'll hit register and it says registration complete and then I can log in. As of this video, login's not working yet because that's next video. I want to get registration out of the way. I had to do a ton of stuff and I didn't want to make this video super long. So that's going to be next video. So, But we are registered and if you notice if I go to register again and I try to register as halls again it will tell me the username is taken. If I just put an H in here, it'll tell me username is too short. If I put uh, more than 16 characters, it will tell me it's too long. So I've already got some of that stuff <coughs> kind of out of the way. You guys can go in and fool with it wherever you want. I need to probably fix that right there. Because we've seen this, because we've seen that it was off, yeah, let's see what this one looks like. Um, <coughs> Yeah, let's do it that way. That looks a little better. Uh, I don't know. Maybe we need to split them. But anyway, here's, here's what I did to make it easier on you guys for that. I created this messages.js where, because I figured everybody's going to want to have their own messages and then you guys are going to have to go through the code and change the messages and all that. I put all the messages here with just numbers that correlate to them and I'll show you how this works. So I can just come in and maybe do that. I don't know. I don't know how it looks right. Maybe, maybe that does look a little better. Yeah, that looks a little better. Let me save it. Back, refresh, register, register. So it changed it. Um, the only thing I didn't do, uh, also, what I did, so if we cut all this out and we do like password something and password something different, it will tell you the password. Or, How's the username taken? I may have put the wrong message on there. We'll check that in a second. So we got one error. So let's look what's happening. So let's go through our code. So let's start with our index. I did change some things up from in the index from before. If you notice, the model the model has nothing in it anymore. It's dynamically built. That way, it changes between registration and your login page. Um, that's really, I think, the only thing I added to the to the um, index except for this. It calls that login page. And if we go to our, um, so let's let's look to see where this is built. So it calls the login page whenever the model comes up, and basically here's function login page, and it basically builds 
it just adds to the inner HTML um, what, what that form was already. And that way when we hit the register button, it actually calls registration and it builds the registration. There's going to be some people out there already knows like, why aren't you using jQuery here? Why are you using this? Because good luck on getting that to work right. Um, jQuery, oft, I have so many problems when I'm trying to do, trying to turn text into an actual like div or forms or for it to read HTML. And you can do, there's, there's, you can do that HTML like I did uh, up here. Um, but I find this just to be easier. It's a quick fix. It works. There's nothing wrong with it. To me, it just works better this way. So if you want to comment on it, I'm fine. But I've, this is just the way I do it. It's just easier when I'm doing something that is that is simple like this, dynamically changing the HTML once or twice. I just use the inner HTML. I know it never fails for me. Anyway, so when we when we click the registration button, so in the beginning it loads the login button. It loads that into the model. When we hit the register button, registration button which you can see it calls registration it calls this function it changes what's in the model and then it runs a ajax query the to get characters.php and just gets all the the classes and loads them up so if we do get characters.php you will see all it does is it selects all from type so the reason why i put type in here is you can actually pass let's go back to this um, i'm passing classes you can actually you can actually put in races too if you wanted. The reason why I did that for those of you that want to use races, we may use them later. I'm not going to put them in right now just because I don't see a point. But I know there's a lot of you that are going to want to. So I'm building this with races so you guys have that. So you could actually put races here, and instead of pulling from the classes table, it'll pull from the races table, or you could do both. So I've kind of put them in there to where you guys can can do either way. So what it would do is just select right now. It's select all from classes, but it would just select all from races. Checks for errors, and then it just returns what rows it finds. We go back to our user login, and what it does when it when it gets that when it returns that row, it does build classes dot data. I mean build classes and sends data. Here, it, all it is is um, I create a I create a variable to hold it, and I just do a for each for every row that's in there, and I just create a character box. I didn't do any CSS on this yet, but I, I named it, but I put that class in there in case I wanted to do it later. It looks good all right now, but I haven't checked it on all different screen sizes, so. That may be something we'll have to change later. But anyway, I just put the radio type. I pass the radio type the ID of the class. Pass the pic in, into the image and then the name. And that's how that's how I'm getting it all. And then I just do another inner HTML of the character div. <clears throat> and um, that's how it basically creates all this. So it just creates a div for each one. You could actually do with that class, what we could do is we could do some um, floats and make it float. Or we could do some rows and columns to build it out, but this to me was just easier. You can make it go all the way down. We may do two columns, whatever, but for now this is just a quick way of doing it. So it dynamically builds that and it passes that ID to that so we know what the ID puts in whatever the name you have in the database there and then puts the image of whatever you have on there. So pretty simplistic system when it comes to that. <clears throat> um, the, the like I said, the login part doesn't work yet. We're, we're we're holding off on that till the next video. So that's pretty much how this section works and how that. Nothing too complicated. It was more of explaining it. It was more just lengthy writing it all out and getting it all working. Um, next, we look at our register.js. This is where it actually once you hit the register button. So once you actually want to register, I'm sorry, right here, it's going to call that register function. Inside that function, we have register. It's going to first check to make sure the passwords match. If it doesn't, it's going to do that. All it's doing is this um, uh, fade box and do an alert danger. It's going to check to see if your um, your username is less than three, and, or I mean greater than three and less than sixteen. I was actually my mind got lost because I was looking for that error that we had. Um, where is it at? It would be. I don't know, we'll check it, oh here it is, no that's right, I'll, I'll look at it again here in a minute. Anyway, so here's the, here's the all, it, all it's doing is checking those three. The next thing we want to add here, and I'll, I'll add it next video because we don't have to add it right now, really I guess we could is, we could just throw this in here, kind of do a copy and paste, and do, if register password value dot length, is let's do less than let's make them at least require three two two or more that's you guys can do it we'll go ahead and do four um then we want to do a new message and we'll call this five 
We'll go over to our messages. We'll create a new one. Five. I guess it's kind of good. I left that out so we can kind of see how this works. Change that to five. Make it look pretty. And we just put... Uh, So that'll fix that to where if you don't enter a password. Um, let's go back to our register.js. So we have that in there. We could actually put this in somewhere else if we wanted to as messages, but uh, this is the only thing that's going to go on this page. So we might as well put it here. Um, let's see. So then the next thing it does is it grabs the player class. It does What it does is it looks for everything that's, that has the name radio classes, whichever one's checked. That's what it's going to put in here. Let's put that there. So that's all it does. This variable just grabs whatever's checked. Um, since, it's a, since it's a radio group, you can only check one of them. Um, then it's going to call to register.php. It's going to pass the username, the password, and the player class. And we'll, so let's go over to our register.php. It's just grabbing those post variables. It's going to select all from players where name equals the username. So here's where it's going to check to see if the player already exists. If it does, it's going to return zero, and that falls back to our zero message. This username is taken. So that's that's really all it's doing. And if you go to your register.js, you'll see in the result, if data equals one, it's going to do it. Else, so you can pass the. I did this too. So if it works, which is one, that means it's going to go ahead and enter the success and say, you know, enter the message one, which is our uh, registration complete. Please log in. <coughs> um, Otherwise, it's going to enter whatever message you put in here. So whatever you pass over here on register.php, which um, this one's zero. But if you wanted to put something else in there, say you wanted to, the email's already taken or whatever, you just pass whatever number message you have here. So if you put case six and put um, email's already taken, I'm not going to do email in this one. But um, and then you go over here and you pass six from here, it'll automatically go ahead and put that message up there for you. So pretty easy stuff. Um, but anyway, if everything works and there's, uh, it grabs the classes again. So right now you can't see it because, like I said, it's going to be the next video. But we are going to implement all those additions to the to your your character. So what I was thinking about doing is is every character's stats start between two and like four, maybe one and four. It'll be random, and then you add on whatever class bonuses you get, and that's what we'll do right here before we do our insert. I didn't do it now because, like I said, this video is kind of long, so we're going to do that next with our login deal. But for now, it's just inserting the username, the password, the player class, and since I'm not using races right now, I didn't, you need to have something in there. I don't want to null, so I just passed one. One's eventually going to be human, and I'm just going to have everybody humans. We will go to races later, so don't worry. We'll, we'll get there. I'm just not wanting to go there right now. But anyway, it's passing all that. Um, one thing I do want to show you um, is that I went ahead and did an include script so we wouldn't have a million of these since I added so many more. So all it's doing is it's including include.js. Let's go to our scripts. Include.js. We go here. Let's see if I've got it already loaded up. All this is doing is including the rest of the scripts. There may be a better way of doing this. Um, this is the way I've always done it, and I haven't seen any better way. There's some complicated ways um, that I didn't want to didn't want to confuse anybody. I haven't ever had a problem with this, so if there is a problem, somebody knows it, you can let me know on the, the forums and give me a better way a better way of doing it. But this works, so I don't I don't know why I wouldn't do it this way. But um, there could be a browser issue or something that I I've, I've just never ran into that could be an issue. So feel free to let me know. But anyway, this is how I'm including it. So anytime you want to include it in script from now on. Just include it right here, and that way you don't have to touch the index anymore. We can just include all our scripts right here. It makes it a lot easier um, to where it keeps our index a little cleaner since it is kind of messy right now. Um, and we are going to clean it up a little better as we go. So other than that, I can't think of anything else I really added. Um, I had this test.js because the, the one complaint I have about brackets is you can't you can't like select this and do a replace all in the selection. And so if I'm wanting to change all of my double quotes to single quotes in just a section, I have to cut it out, put it in test, paste it, change it, and then put it back. So and there may be a way I'm not seeing it, but I, I just haven't been able to figure out how to do it. So that's that's why I have this test.js. I'll delete it before I send it over. Um, 
so that's basically the register page. It doesn't seem like a lot, but it took a little while to do it just because of all the writing and getting it all working and everything, but it does work fine. I hope you guys understand how it works. Well, I'm hoping that we can get that done, get the login page done, and not ever have to come back to this. We will be adding new things to it. Um, some you know some more features to when you first register and you log in and stuff like that but for now I just want to get it done so we can get back to the game um, let me let me just double check one more time to make sure I didn't miss anything um, we talked about message that's all that was really in there login we talked about both of those our include file PHP we have our get characters we talked about and our register we talked about so I'm thinking we are good to go um, We'll go ahead and delete that because I'll, I'll get you guys a new SQL uh, deal. So, okay, looks like we're good. And the next video, we're going to go into the um, building the character as you register and getting them all ready, and then the login page, and then we'll be ready to move on to putting the character actually on the map and displaying stuff uh, as they get registered.